Welcome. Hi, I'm uh, Ida Reyes, and I'm a certified divorce lending professional. And this interview is part of our divorce literacy, literacy series from the Divorce Lending Association. And we're really excited about it because it's a unique project that's an excellent opportunity for us to provide insight and access to local family law professionals for those who are looking for information. And so today I'm with Tom Burns. And Tom, would you kindly introduce yourself and tell us about what you do? Yeah, thanks, Ida. I'm glad to be with you. Um, my name's Tom Burns. I'm an attorney, I'm also a mediator and a collaborative law practitioner, uh, partner at a law firm here in Howard County in Columbia called Berger and Burns that uh, uh, I've been uh, invested in and working in with my partner and friend, Victor Berger, since 2009. I've been practicing law since 1995. Uh, and mm -hmm. doing family law since probably the early 2000s. Many years of experience. So um, do you have a specialty within family law in terms of particular cases that you do or a process that you work with that you prefer, that sort of thing? Yeah, I appreciate the question. Um, I, I uh, Within the family law context, I prefer to, to work on things out of court in an alternative yeah. dispute resolution uh, sort of fashion to include mediation. Um, I'm on the court mediation list. I do a lot of mediation. I've been doing collaborative practice since about 2006 or so um, and really enjoy that practice. I uh, really like the opportunity to work with people um, during challenging a challenging set of circumstances to do things um, and to give them opportunities, I'll say it that way, to work through uh, the complicated transition that they're going through in ways that might not be cookie cutter. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, we, we know that each divorce is very unique and everyone um, experiences their own very unique journey. And so if you had to give someone advice that was about to start down this path, what would you say? What would you give? What you give them? Yeah, I would suggest. I mean, I would say to people that um, that you, it's probably best to be educated about what your options are, because I think a lot of people look before they leap. And I've been divorced myself beyond doing mm -hmm. this for a long period of time, and so I have a lot of empathy for for individuals who are going through uh, what is a very very challenging uh, time in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people just want to get to the end of it sometimes, uh, which is understandable. Uh, but with that said, I think that, you know, kind of education about what your options are in terms of process and then within whatever process you choose, the options to uh, to, to uh, look at what the outcomes and potential outcomes could be would be really important. So when you have a client that comes into you and they're just talking to you and trying to figure out what to do, do you talk to them about all of the avenues that they can take? How do you handle that conversation? What kind of information do you give? Yeah, I mean, typ a typical initial consult with me would include kind of looking at all the options to kind of move the matter forward to include litigation. I do do some of that still. I've tried to move away from that in terms of looking at other alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. Mm -hmm. but beyond litigation, we've touched on some of it. Uh, looking at mediation, which is the opportunity for uh, the couple to uh, work with a neutral to kind of look at what the issues are and try and identify those issues and brainstorm options and try to reach some uh, what I'll call an acceptable uh, to both parties outcome. Um, and then there's collaborative law, which would be uh, to have a team put together to include collaboratively trained lawyers, to include uh, financial professionals or financial neutrals. There's the opportunity to engage child specialists to have the child's voice heard in the matter. Um, and then uh, mortgage professionals as well, in some instances, mm -hmm. uh, to take a look again at what options might be out there to try to come up with some creative solutions uh, in that model. So if, so if you, and you know, we know that a strong team is really important. So um, what would you recommend someone to look for in terms of a team? What what sort of attributes would you tell them? To yeah, them? I mean, I I tell my clients, uh, and I I this I think goes for me personally, and then mm -hmm. professionally when I'm working with my clients, I tell people that I think that they want to look for people that are going to be good fits for them, both philosophically and personally, because mm -hmm. again, it's just such a challenging time. Um, I think that again, a lot of 
sometimes people end up uh, with attorneys or other professionals and they wonder how they got there. Right? Yeah. Um, so I think you want to kind of be on the same page about what the philosophy is. For example, if you're looking for an out of court uh, alternative dispute resolution attorney or a collaborative attorney, I think that's where you're starting. Uh, so that you don't end up with an attorney that's going to push you more toward litigation. So the philosophical fit is important. And then uh, the, the I think, personal touch and personal fit is really important because with your attorney in particular, but I think with all the financial professionals and mental health professionals that you may work with, you're really sharing intimate details of your life. And yeah. as I said, it's really a challenging time. So I think you're really looking to be with somebody uh, and work with somebody that you're going to work well with because it'll make it just a bit less painful. Yeah. And I think when people are in that position, are you know, they, they're so emotionally vulnerable, you know, so having a, having a good team that like what you said, agreeing with them philosophically is so important. Um, yeah, I, th I, I think so. I mean, again, the idea of, of working well together and then within a team, you know, having a, financial professionals and mental health professionals and other professionals that work well together within the team construct and with the parties is just so important. Uh, again, from an efficiency standpoint, I think, and then, you know, from a, uh, I'll just call it an emotional or, or challenging standpoint, um, you want to work <laughs> on something challenging with people that you um, uh, respect and work well with. Yes, absolutely. So, Tom, if you had to tell us about your most gratifying case and how it was impactful to you and how you were able to make a difference for your client, do you have a case that you want to just share a couple of things with us that we can take away? Yeah, there are so many, of course. I mean, in doing this and I've been doing I've been practicing in family law for 20 years or so now yeah. and I've worked with so many people. I find it to be immensely rewarding to help people kind of work through their uh, practical uh, challenges and practical issues. A case that would come to mind is, uh, you know, I've had a case uh, that goes back a ways and it's nice when you see children kind of come through a divorce well. And so I had a case that went back quite a while um, and, uh, you know, couple was looking at trying to move from two households to one household and how to potentially keep a house and maintain a house. Ultimately, uh, you know, a court in the long run would do nothing other than sell the house. But in our process, we were able to look at options and brainstorm some options and come up with some solutions that were acceptable to both parties that enabled, um, you know, a uh, my client to stay in the house. And in the long run, the most satisfying part of it is, is in keeping touch, uh, keeping in touch with, with clients like the one I'm referencing here. I get to find out that these children were able to stay in their school district, were right. able to graduate from, you know, very good colleges. And so to hear something like that's especially rewarding. Yeah, that feels good, I'm sure. Do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Yeah, um, you know, in doing this, I, I would share that I think, you know, modern life in general is really busy and challenging. And as we've noted here and we've talked about a bit, going through a divorce is especially challenging. It really is going to challenge, I think, anybody who goes through it. Um, and it does that from an emotional standpoint, from a financial standpoint, from a social standpoint. And so what I try to tell people is that as challenging as that can be, that there's life on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, you know, again, to try to take advantage of what you can learn from the relationship that you just came through, and then what you can learn from the professionals that you've worked with as uh, you're finalizing your divorce and kind of taking the first steps forward in your new life. I think if you do that, you can come out in as strong a position as you possibly can uh, after, uh, you know, such a challenging period. Well, listen, I can't thank you enough for sharing your valuable time with me today. And, um, if someone would like to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Uh, they could visit our website, which would be www.berger, B-E-R-G-E-R, -E Burns, B-U-R-N-S.com. That'd be a great way to do it. I'm also available by, by email. That would be Tom at BurgerBurns.com or by telephone, uh, which is 410-465-7904. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ida.